Hey, hey, that was really nice. It's really nice to meet you. My name yeah. is Maite. I work for Ignite Sweden. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, I was watching your pitch and I actually, there was something that really caught my mind. I will read it because I had to actually take note of that. And that was that you can generate over thousands of ideas. How does it work? Or which kind of problems can you can you solve with those ideas? Yeah, so it took us several years to get to around 4 million ideas per minute. So it, Wow! Uh, and we, we operate in around 20 industries uh, globally. Uh, we are particularly passionate, uh, passionate about uh, decarbonization. Uh, you yeah. can actually discover uh, novel opportunities to decarbonize, uh, but also uh, um, also helping uh, companies invent and innovate. So uh, areas where AI can actually help coming up with creative ideas, for example, for how to repurpose uh, chemicals or other assets of a company in order to create environmentally friendly products, is yeah. where, where sometimes uh, human creativity with the cognitive biases and bottlenecks uh, uh, creates a limit. Yeah, and you have customers all around the world. I read somewhere that you have many customers that I find that were are featured some five hundred uh, companies, top companies in on Fortune. Tell us about your customers, like your, you know, the ones that you are working with, even if you cannot say num uh, names. Yeah, yeah, so so happy to. So uh, so one uh, which just recently released a press release is Baker McKenzie, uh, a global law firm, and the the vision is to to jointly uh, disrupt the, the the legal industry, uh, where machines can help not only uh, go deeper but also uh, strategize and uh, and uh, create new services uh, the, and faster turnaround. Uh, uh, we are quite active in the drug discovery space, where uh, where mm -hmm. basically it's the machine reads patents, scientific publications, clinical trials, and tries to connect the dots uh, between different uh, 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 different bits of information that appear in different places. And uh, by connecting them, you can actually start uh, creating a fire hose of ideas that uh, that uh, pe uh, the experts can then uh, review. And even in the um, um, actually. Uh, in, in the area, Dyke and Snyheter, uh, we help them uh, increase their customer engagement uh, uh, and reduce churn. They actually published about it uh, on, the, on the web. Uh, so it's very diverse. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see. Yeah. So for example, Equinor is one of our uh, uh, clients and, uh, and partners. And uh, uh, it, it, we are quite, a, um, I would say, broad and uh, generic general purpose uh, company. Uh, when we mentor startups, we typically tell them to focus, and here we do the complete opposite. Uh, with Scott yeah. Beyond and uh, keeping the company very, um, um, I would say, horizontal in nature. Yeah, because, well, there was something that you told us about, like, the noble causes, and you gave us many case examples. But how did you come up with the idea? How did it start? It? Which year? Tell us about that. Yeah, so it started actually not as a company, but as a garage experiment. Uh, okay. We wanted uh, to see um, if it's possible to build a machine, an engine, that can uh, uh, idea, that can invent. We had no idea what uh, whether it's even applicable as a business. Uh, yeah. And uh, around uh, six months after we built the first prototype, uh, uh, the machine started winning competitions. Okay, uh, and, uh, and that's right. Uh, um, and th that gave us such a huge boost of confidence that everybody quit their jobs, and that's how we started the company. Uh, so, uh, so we said, what happens if just like Google crawls the web for text, we do the same for code and create a massive library of uh, functions. One can compute the distance between two geo coordinates. Another one could explore what's around a certain area, and a third one could uh, compute the angle of the sun in a certain place and time. Uh, but if you now connect the dots between these three, uh, you can articulate a new idea, a new theory that, for example, could be relevant in the context of energy efficient buildings. So, mm. uh, uh, and that was the, the Eureka moment. So we basically used genetic algorithms which imitate uh, evolution, right, natural selection, but in this case, ideas uh, mutate, breed, evolve. Uh, and then we took it to the next level when we started connecting the machine to a broad range of external data sources. Uh, to cover the entire spectrum of dynamics that happen on Earth. Think about news, uh, Wikipedia, satellite imagery, uh, weather, and other sources, uh, because we believe that your data tells only part of the story, right? So we need uh, the, hmm. to connect the dots and find these multidisciplinary patterns. 
So we can say that flexibility and pivoting is something that you can really do. Yeah, it, it, it's almost, <laughs> I would say, a design principle, a design objective for the platform. And when did you start? We started in Which 2013. Year? Uh, say it again, sorry. 2013. Uh, okay. When we started, right, and uh, and uh, I'm more energized than ever because uh, for me, Spark Beyond is a, is a life mission in many ways. Uh, because uh, maybe the current pandemic is such a good reminder that we need yeah. different machinery for problem solving. Right, we're almost one year down the road. We see a light at the end of the tunnel with the latest announcements by Pfizer and others. Uh, but trillions of dollars have been poured into it. And we can, as society, as humanity, we failed. And the climate crisis is going to be even more challenging. So we need a different machinery for problem solving. Exactly. Get permission. And you said that you started seven years ago. Yeah. And how many were you then? And how many are you in your team now? Yeah, so we how were, has your team grown? Right. So, so we, we started two, three people, uh, uh, geeks like me, in a, uh, in a garage mode. We are more than 150 people now. We have offices. In How many? Again, 150. 100? Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have offices in uh, New York, uh, San Francisco, London, uh, Poland, Singapore, Melbourne, Thailand, and uh, and uh, Israel. The R and D is in Tel Aviv. Yeah. So you are all over the world now. Yeah, I, w I wish I could be more uh, all over the world in terms of flying. I'm a bit uh, grounded in the last few months. But have you ever met? Because tomorrow you have many meetings on a matchmaking session that we are that we are holding. Have you ever met a Swedish company? Do you have any any Swedish clients right now? Yeah, so we we work both in Sweden and in the region uh, in general. Mm -hmm. So so from uh, uh, publishers uh, to energy companies uh, to uh, retail. Uh, as well as global companies uh, like management consulting firms and others who, who have local offices. So we, we actually really like the region uh, uh, because it's a very innovative and entrepreneurial uh, region. Yeah, and you're based in Israel. Yeah. Can you tell us something about the... I mean, you started in Israel, right? Yeah. Yeah, and can you tell us a little bit about the, because I guess that there are many people that are watching that they have no idea of the, how we see the startup community uh -huh. of Israel. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Because you come from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was born in Kiev in Ukraine and uh, mm -hmm. my parents moved to Israel when I was seven. Uh, and uh, my story is that I started writing code when I was six and I, I think I never stopped uh, ever since. And then it's you sort of growing to it because uh, inter entrepreneurship is all around you. And everyone mm -hmm. has a startup. Sometimes it feels like, uh, who are the employees if uh, everyone has a startup? Uh, uh, and uh, and it gives you years to incubate ideas, right? Because you 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 almost develop a, a, a healthy obsession towards uh, finding entrepreneurial uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, and I think what helps everyone is uh, is the fact that it's uh, it's absolutely okay to fail. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes there are even meetups uh, where people tell about their failures, and they're uh, and and the community hugs them, right? The community uh, uh, accepts it, and uh, and uh, there is a lot of mentorship. So I think that it's like the third uh, stage or the third order of uh, of an ecosystem that's created. Because the first thing that you need is talent, then you need the the, the entrepreneurial spark, then you need capital. Uh, yeah. And then you need ecosystems for this, uh, just like in the Bay Area and uh, other reasons uh, uh, for for these serendipitous connections to start emerging, and and the power of network is exponential. Yeah, I will say something because we have many people watching. Don't forget to leave your questions. This is not just me interviewing. We want I we want you to ask all your questions that you have about Spark Beyond, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, uh, which is your the case? That, oh, which was that moment that you said, "Yeah, this is really working." I, I sh do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the, because you said that you have won many prizes in the beginning. Which was the moment you said, "Okay, I will so go that, for it." Right. So there, there are very interesting uh, um, machine learning competitions like uh, like Kaggle. And uh, and uh, when we gave uh, uh, the software to to one of our investors who, who is not a data scientist, uh, and he won the first place in se several competitions, uh, uh, that was the moment that we paused for a second and we said we have something special here. The other one is when a global uh, uh, 
um, um, company, a Fortune 500 company, actually ran a competition. More than 200 companies applied, and after winning this, uh, it uh, turned into a strategic partnership. And what we realize is that the uniqueness of Sparkbion is the fact that while the majority of companies in the machine learning and the analytics space, uh, they solve the problem of building a predictive model or, or classifying something, recognizing, and basically replicating the cognitive capacity of the human brain, which is wonderful. You can easily automate the, the like 15, 20% of the world GDP in the next 10 years just through, uh, I don't know, autonomous vehicles and drones with computer vision and the, uh, uh, in the chatbots in call centers, etc., and Amazon Go-like experience. Uh, uh, yeah. We are fascinated about the opposite end of the spectrum, which is can we give the, the machines the capacity to be creative, curious, innovate, invent, so not just predicting the future, but shaping it. And now, don't forget, because we have only, I would say, three minutes left, so don't forget to leave your questions there. And I have another one. <laughs> I have many questions myself. Uh, which are actually, what do you expect from this pitch competition and what is your call, call to action right now? Yeah. If you have to say to others, what's your call, of ac so, call to action? So what will my be? most important, my primary uh, call to action uh, is uh, to drive people to create networks and to combine for, uh, for uh, startups and, uh, and more established uh, corporates and uh, and the countries to to collaborate because we have a massive challenge uh, which is the climate crisis we will need to to re-engineer mm. the entire economy and everyone needs to join forces because we don't have time so this is the primary call to action right let's create the connection yeah let's collaborate let's uh, let's iterate let's experiment let's take risks because we need bold uh, moves and fast yeah, that's a, that's a great answer, I would say. And you talk a lot, a lot about sustainability. Which are the sustainable development goals that you are targeting with your solution? Yeah. Oh, we have a question here. So afterwards, I can say it. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, the the most important SDG that uh, that we care about, of course, uh, it's very hard to to uh, to compare, uh, uh, is the climate crisis. Uh, but there is another important SDG which talks about the infrastructure for technology, innovation and progress. Mm -hmm. These are not the exact wording, uh, but uh, yeah. we need to step up, step up in, the, in the, the rate that we develop. I will uh, answer Amit's question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I will read them out, out loud. Best su suggestion from Laji, I don't know if I'm... How to build trust in this online-only situation we face now? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's uh, maybe a, a comment. The next one is the... Yeah, what was your M MVP like? Yeah, uh, so the, the, the MVP, the minimal viable product, uh, uh, was actually just the engine. Uh, I would not even say that maybe it was not viable uh, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, uh, because we actually provided professional services on top because we were equipped to operate the engine and we bootstrapped uh, it. And only later, one year later, we built an envelope of the user interface on top so it was very backend core engine algorithm AI focused uh, and not, uh, not user experience focused. In hindsight, I would say it's not necessarily the right approach. Sometimes a better approach is actually start with the end experience uh, uh, and maybe you actually do not need as much hardcore technology as before. Uh, as you yeah. Know. And this is the last question that we have here and I think that's a perfect ending. How we can collaborate remotely with you? Oh, easily. Uh, I will uh, leave my details uh, in the chat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Do it and, now. <laughs> uh, and 99% uh, of our activity, particularly these days, is, uh, is remote. We, we both uh, have presence, uh, global presence in different countries, uh, but also we had to, to build the entire organization around the, the ability to, to collaborate remotely. Trust is super important in this case. Yeah, well, we got a little bit more questions, but the thing is that we have to go back to stage now because it's you know, like now 14.55 Swedish time, we have more more programs. So leave your questions, I mean, leave your questions, leave the leave your contact details there. I would leave it open for a few minutes so you can take note of those contact details. And I we will see you back on stage. Thank yep. you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>